natural medicine and functional medicine, it was following conventional medicine just with a different peril. Instead of pharmaceutical companies, there are the nutraceutical companies who are really influencing education. When a company makes a probiotic and then they fund a clinical trial, which is a, a wonderful thing in science that we, we need, unfortunately, what ends up spawning off of that is now the company declares, well, this is the best probiotic for X, Y, Z, because we have the clinical trial and understandably so for that company, that's a piece of marketing clout and they, they're proud of that and they want to educate about that. But what ends up happening is, you know, th th there's this mistaken thinking that that probiotic is the best probiotic for that condition. And these companies won't disclose, but oh, by the way, a different probiotic showed benefit for the same condition. They're not going to tell you that. So what ends up happening is this, this kind of market pressure to prop up one probiotic as the best for depression, another as the best for constipation, another as the best for kids. And when you look at the probiotic literature, you'll see this trend of, well, you know, there was one probiotic that had a clinical trial for constipation, just as an example. But then six months later, a different probiotic also found benefit for constipation. And then a year after that, there was a clinical trial comparing two different probiotics, and they both found equal results for constipation. And the same thing for depression. Um, and the same thing for, for children probiotics. You'll see that different formulas have been used in um, the, the various clinical trials. So, Instead of getting wrapped into this is the best formula for XYZ, or you need this specific strain or species for ABC, what I've come to see as a result of clinical reflection is that we can really break probiotics into three different types and then personalize those three different types to the individual. The three different types of probiotics, three different categorical types, that pretty much all of the formulas on the market that have been used in the clinical trials organize themselves into, generally speaking, are your most traditional form, which is a combination of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species blends. The second type is actually a healthy fungus, and this is Saccharomyces boulardii. And there's about uh, 50 or so clinical trials with uh, this type of probiotic. And again, it's a healthy fungus, and it's been shown to help in a, in a multitude of different conditions. And then third and finally, there is this newer probiotic, the golden child of, of the paleo and ancestral health community. And these are your soil-based probiotics. That's the, the third type. And there's about 20 to 40 studies on that, depending on what body of literature you look at, finding benefit in, in various conditions also. Why this is important and why this is relevant is because the consumer is confronted with a, this is the best probiotic for that. And there, there's all these competing marketing claims on the internet, but what underlies that is a selective citation of the science, right? We're going to tell you that our probiotic is best because of the references for our probiotic. We're going to not tell you about the competitor probiotic that showed something similar or the other competitor or the other competitor, leading you with this dizzying array of options and no unifying philosophy for what seems to be the best way to use probiotics is having the highest species count that you can the more species tends to be the, the more beneficial effect. An individual can try one category, see how they feel. If there's partial improvement and they need more resolution, they can go on the second and even go on the third to try to have the most kind of all-encompassing three-legged support for the microbiota. And that's what I've found to work uh, vastly better than one probiotic alone. And it also gets you through kind of the maze of all these claims that people are getting peppered.